his own version of the Rolling Stones, only in Soho, ladies and gents. Hi everyone, Sinead with Free Tours by Foot London. I am at Savile Row. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna take you on a journey of one of the most exclusive men's tailoring streets in the world. From there, we're gonna head into Soho, and I wanna show you just a, bit, a few of the highlights of Soho, where I would hang out essentially along the way. We're gonna to go to record stores, we're gonna to go to food markets, we're gonna check in out amazing eateries, we're gonna see where the theater shows are, the entertainment district at its finest. Today's tour, ladies and gents, is all about my highlights in Soho. Today I want to introduce you to some of the more unique places and meet some of the local faces in the area. We'll start in Mayfair on Savile Row, the exclusive tailors, then we'll make our way around back onto Regent Street. I'll take you to a private courtyard, Hedden Street, for an amazing pop-up that is there for a limited amount of time. Now we're going to cross Regent Street again and head into Soho, some of my favourite eateries, then out on Carnaby Street and into two very famous rock and roll memorabilia stores. From there, I'll make my way down towards the Vinyl Mile, which is Berwick Street, into a very famous pub, The Ship, and around the back of St. Anne's Court will take us back out onto Dean Street. Our final destination on the tour will be Frith Street, one of my favorite places to get a glass of wine in Stoho. Stay tuned, ladies and gents. A lot of people to meet along the way. Now, ladies and gents, so this is the amazing Savile Row, one of the most exclusive men's tailoring streets in the world. Now, some of the tailors in here have tailored to members of the royal family, famous actors. It's always super busy around here at Oscar time, but also Christmas time as well. I've seen a lot of celebrity sightings along here, but we're far too discreet to make a fuss of celebrities, of course. But first, before we get going, I just wanted to show you this building. Now, I have featured this in our rock and roll tour. And we also do a Soho Piccadilly Circus in Chinatown tour, but this is number three Savile Row. And this was the former Apple Studios, and this is where the Beatles did most of their recording outside of Abbey Road. Now, the year is 1969, and the last Beatles performance ever in history was on the rooftop of this very building. Now, just to specify, folks, just where the, second, the two floors at the top, they were not there in 1969. So they would have been where that kind of white panelling uh, across is. And they've just got their recent uh, plaque here. Let me just show you there. The Beatles' last performance, number three, Savile Row. So over the years, it's been a mecca for Beatles fans. People come from all over the world to get their photographs in front of number three. But the last Beatles performance in history, it all ended here after 1969. But please consult our rock and roll tour. I speak a lot more in depth about that day on the rock and roll tour but for right now let's have a look at some of these exclusive men's tailoring tailors along here now Degan Skinner is coming up in just a moment this is where Prince Harry would have had his wedding suit made but you will see a lot of warrants in here with reference to the people that have all had suits now they do tailor to women now as well uh, some of them have tailored to the Queen herself Prince Charles, Princess Anne, but Haile Selassie, Winston Churchill. Uh, over the years, uh, Tommy Nutter had an amazing barbers here. Now, Tommy Nutter saw a huge demand actually for, well, tailoring for the rock stars. So as you can imagine, they weren't too happy about these hippies and rock stars arriving into their neighborhood, but he made a fortune from tailoring to the likes of Mick Jagger, flamboyant costumes for Elton John, and he made three out of the four suits on the front of the Abbey Road album. I'll show you where his tailors was in a moment, but this is the Huntsman. And the Huntsman you might be familiar with, if you saw the amazing movie, The Kingsman. And just to show you up here, this is the tailors they used for that movie. It's a pretty cool Instagram shot there. Hi guys, you can see me there. And the in Kingsman established, so underneath there was the Kingsman headquarters in that movie. Now the warrants they have in the window was they have tailored to HRH, His Royal Highness Prince Bernhard of the Netherlands. And on this one, I don't quite know who that one is, but that's okay. So we're gonna head along here. Now this was the former Tommy Nutters. It's Chittleborough and Morgan now. Tommy Nutter, as I mentioned, was the tailor to the rock stars. All bespoke tailors in this area, but I'm gonna take you inside one of the very first tailors in Savile Row in just a moment. 
but let's have a look here it was very elegant around here um, I'm getting a few weird looks I don't think they're used to Instagrammers around here but I'm so lucky in that this fabulous gentleman in here is after giving me permission to come inside so just to have a little look this is Henry Poole and & Co. And it's probably one of the more famous tailors in London. It was certainly the first tailors to open up on Savile Row. And there are three warrants in the window. Now, they're a little difficult to see, but what I'll do is I will maximize them and I'll call them out. The one on the left, he's tailored to Emperor Napoleon III. In the middle is Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. And the one on the right-hand side is Haile Selassie. Now, please do not criticize my pronunciation. I hope I got that right. Haile Selassie, the emperor of Ethiopia, but also considered to be the god of Rastafarian. So let's have a quick look inside one of the first bespoke tailors in London. Now, very exclusive store. And I'll give you an idea of what a working tailors is like in London. So we just have a quick little look around. The chaps are very busy, hard at work. They're beautiful Christmas decorations as well. And you'll get an idea of a working tailor's on Savile Row. Look how stunning. It's like a gentleman's library in here, isn't it? Now, it's quite intriguing because I was just in here a moment ago and I was talking to the chaps. They're super busy. They have a lot of orders in for Christmas. Gentlemen, all your cuffling desires here are catered to. They have had they have over 40 warrants, ladies and gents. So they've tailored to royal families and superstars and rock stars and actors. And have a big clientele abroad as well, in America and Asia. But look at these. I was actually completely blown away by these. Aren't they amazing? Do you see these little suits? They're like little prototypes. And he's going to tell me a little bit about this and how their process works in um, Henry Pool & Co. Hi, Hello, lovely. Thank Hello, you very Sinead. much for having us. You're a very sweet. May I give you that just for a minute? So if you are to tell me, just this little process here is stunning. Well, these these are small mannequins that we knocked up for an exhibition a few years ago. Okay. Um, but I've kept them around because they they're a good indication of what we do. Okay. Uh, this is uh, after we've cut the uh, pattern for the gentleman, measured them up, and we cut a card pattern. Okay. Then we construct a loosely constructed, uh, tacked together garment like so with extra fabric on the insides, on the bottom, on the shoulders, so that we can uh, rip it all apart after fitting it, press it all flat, recut it, Amazing. and then put it back in the workshop and then get a slightly more advanced fitting with the facings on, the pockets done, um, the front edges And all bespoke fixed. to fit the gentleman in question, of course. That's right, so we, we'll measure you up, uh, maybe three or four weeks later we'll see a first fitting Maybe uh, three weeks later, we'll see a second fitting. And after that, uh, when, we're, when we're comfortable with the fit, then um, we'll finish it off. And how long exactly would the whole process take, roughly, do you think? At the moment, we're saying it's about 10 to 12 weeks lead time for a um, suit. And we need to see a new, a new customer about three or four times. Certainly four times for a first garment measuring, then three fittings. And as you can see, as you can see, this gentleman is very hard at work here at the back, cutting out patterns, etc. I mean, what an incredible industry. And it's amazing how it still survived. I mean, it's still massively popular, of course, isn't it? From You have a, a big international trade, I believe. Yes, we, we are still traveling tailors. So we, I go to Hong Kong, Singapore, China. We go to America and uh, Japan, uh, most of Europe. Amazing. So you must get a lot of uh, celebrities and members of the royal family as well that you tailor for. Obviously, we're far too discreet to mention who, but... Um... Yes, we're very discreet. I would say um, that's the first question people ask me when they know I'm a tailor on Savile Row. And who have you tailored to? Famous customers. And <laughs> Amazing. I, I always say most, most of the gentlemen we see, that they may not be uh, celebrities. They may be influential, powerful people, but they may not be in the public eye. Very good. Um, those sorts tend to favour faster fashion. It's okay. It's quite a, quite a okay. process to come here and have a suit made. That there makes are sense. exceptions to that. People that really love the process will come here and, and go through it. But a lot of people who are celebrities get styled. They'll have a team. They do have stylists, don't yeah, they? Yeah, we, you're right. Yeah. When they hear the, the price and the lead time, then it's, it's difficult for them to, to jump this way. But 
Uh, it's a very traditional process. Not much has changed in the last 150 years. We still make everything by hand in the and traditional And the first way. tailors on Savile Row, which is an amazing feat. That's right. And Savile, a... As you know, probably, Savile Row used to have a lot of doctors on it before they all moved to Harley Street. That's right. That's right. And, um, Something I never actually really mentioned before. I must explain that to my customers a bit better, actually, later. Well, that's amazing, you guys. Thank you so much for the permissions to come in. I really appreciate it. It's Pleasure brilliant, our me. customers. And lovely. And best of luck for the season. Uh, just one final look there, ladies and gents. And this, a Bespoke Tailors and the very first on Savile Row. So that was kind of amazing. It's unusual to be able to get access to one of these amazing tailors. So I'm super excited about that. I hope you enjoyed it, ladies and gents. But continuing on... And you know, all my tours are a bit of a mixed bag of stuff. Next, if you are a fan of David Bowie or the Rolling Stones, you need to stay tuned. I'm gonna take you in to this amazing David Bowie exhibit. Now it's only a pop-up, so it's only here until the 23rd of January. beautiful Regent Street. High-end shopping, again named after the Prince Regent, who later had become George IV. This was laid out, and I suppose it was the first example of town planning in London, now famous for its designer stores like Reese. Levi's isn't really designer, but you have Gantt and Watches of Switzerland and Calvin Klein and Guest Anthropology. A lot of roadworks, but there's always some construction work going on in London. But we're going to take a little right here and head down Hedden Street. I'll show you some amazing shops along the way here. Abercrombie and Fitch, Massimo Dutti. I'll probably get annihilated for my pronunciations again. There's Rolex and the watches of Switzerland. And let's make our way right down here. I'm excited about this because I haven't been in here, folks. And I love Bowie. And next, we're going to head in then to Soho. And the Kingley Street. And we'll have a look around Carnaby Street. And a lot of people and places I want to introduce you to along the way. Now, Hedden Street is coming up. Now, the day that actually Bowie died, this is where people came to pay their respects. And they had announced, a, a lady announced a street party on, in Brixton, I'm sorry, I'm kind of losing my way here today. And that street party was to celebrate the life of David Bowie. And of course, I had to head down there to see what was happening and about 5,000 people showed up and it was an amazing night. I remember how chronically cold it was. We were frozen but we didn't care because we were singing Starman and Space Oddity and Life on Mars. So here's somebody leaving their tribute to him. And this is where the front cover of Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars album was shot with David Bowie famously posing against the wall. So this area is lovely actually, um, because there's some great little eateries around here. It's a bit secret and off the bit beaten track. But just this little side street called Hedden Street off Soho. Now let's head inside and see what this is all about. I'm super excited. Let's walk straight in. Oh, automatic doors. Look at this, you guys, the colors. Thank you. Hi guys. Look at this. Oh, one of the many, many pop-up exhibits that happen in London. And this is what the greatest part about living in this country is, or this city is. These options. So there's that iconic image that he took. And I just wanted to show you that. Just inside the telephone box. That's on the sleeve of the Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars album. And there it is. So that's the famous shot there. 
of him right at where we were, where the blue plaque for him was. Bit of Bowie trivia, in 1998, David covered a George and Ira Gershwin classic. What was the name of the song? Scan the code, right? I'll let you answer that, you guys. Oh my God, this is epic. This is the beauty of London, you guys. We have vinyl, all Bowie's vinyl. Here we have the iconic image. All this memorabilia, clothing, CD sets. Oh my God, I am a DJ. I am what I play. I love this, this is so cool. Well, let's look, take a little look downstairs because we have a lot to cover today, so I can't delay too long in here. People are super excited. David Bowie as. So good to be in here. Look at the school bags. Kitties. Black Star. Of course, that was his last album was it, before he died. We didn't know he was dying. But he did. Hunky Dory. So basically, when I headed down the stairs, folks, I sat in a room and it was a simulation of the audio you would experience at an actual Bowie concert. It was pretty special, um, but you'll have to visit in person. Unfortunately, we are not allowed to use this audio for a copyright claim. Now, let's head back upstairs and head around and out of the Bowie exhibit and continue on the tour. Now, let me get some images for you here as we're heading up. Oh wow, I love what they've done here. The distop Dist discography timeline. I'm sorry, that sounds so bad that I couldn't pronounce that properly. All the amazing albums. What's the email again, you guys? Uh, so if you just go to bowie75.com. Bowie75.com. Okay, perfect. Thanks, you guys. That's great. Yeah, so bowie75.com, and they'll be able to give you the full experience there. And you can buy any of the memorabilia you see here, you guys. And that's it. David Bowie on Hedden Street. Thank you so much, folks. That's wonderful. Thank you. Right, let's head out. Let's make our way into Soho and around Carnaby. And let me just show you some of the cool places, the people we're going to meet, the places we're going to visit. I mean, this is the best day for me in London because I know exactly where I'm going, so stay tuned. So that little short walk takes us down here onto Tennyson Court and that's going to bring us out on Kingley Street. Right ahead of you is a members only club now, the Court, but you can get membership in there for a certain fee once a year. But this was the famous Bag and Ales pub. This is where Jimi Hendrix in the experience had his very first gig. It's where Paul McCartney met Linda. Look, beautiful Kingley Street. Now again, for more reference on that rock and roll history, you can visit, you can check out our Soho Piccadilly Circus and Chinatown tour, and also a rock and roll tour. But just in case you don't believe me, there's little circular blue plaques telling us the same. Right, let's head down here, because I want to show you some of the famous eateries. Now, Soho originally was used for hunting purposes, and that's where the name comes from, Soho. So it's like a 17th century hunting cry. So they'd suit up on their horses, their hair, hair would be released, the hounds would be released, and they would hunt, or the fox, fox hunt, 
and they would cry things like Soho or Tally Ho. So that's where the name originally came from. And a lot of people get confused because they think it comes from Soho in New York, but actually it was named after that. But Soho in New York is South Houston. Look at Ganton Street. So this is another one of the Blue Post pubs. There's quite a few of them in every corner of Soho, but this is a great dehesa and an amazing meal there with my cousins years ago. Outdoor dining, tapas actually. Famous dishum is coming up. That's an amazing Indian restaurant. There's a dishum in Covent Garden area as well. I believe there's one in East London. There's quite a few of them, but everybody comes to London, I recommend Dishoom to them. So that's the, uh, over the years then, the French Huguenots moved in here for a while. It was the residential area of the super rich for a period of time. Then you saw the French Huguenots move in and there was a very serious outbreak of cholera in the 1850s and more on that to come shortly when we visit the John Snow pub. So the rich tended to move out to neighborhoods like Mayfair in the West End. Uh, particularly around the Mayfair area, it's stunningly beautiful down there. Again, another video I have done on Mayfair. So you can check that one out. And over the years, I saw a massive influx of migrants, the Greeks, the Italians, the French, and that had a sensational effect on the food in the area, and a massive eclectic mix of brilliant restaurants in the area. But of course, it's synonymous with rock and roll history, the sex industry and sex, drugs and rock and roll. This is Ganton Street. You see these beautiful little butterflies? They were erected and the theme behind them was the freedom of refugees and being able to move here. A wonderful charity here erected these to highlight the plight of refugees all over the world. And right now we're coming out on one of the more famous streets in the entire Soho. Carnaby Street and look how colorful it is but don't forget these lovely back streets up here as well There's some great little independent jewelry stores the great frog is up there as is Ralph Lauren barber there's a huge Mac store there as well but this is more high-end luxury well high-end shopping now I feel like for fashionistas the offices of Vogue and Marie Claire have been in this area and used to do a lot of model scouting along here. Twiggy has several photos you'll see of Twiggy posing here on Carnaby Street but every mix of London's music scene would have hung out here as well over the years. So nothing like it used to be but there's some amazing photos particularly of the mods. Now I know the Sex Pistols were very much are the punks associated with the King's Road in Chelsea and that's another area I must guide for you in the future we've got a lot coming up by the way 2022 wow <laughs> around the corner so this is Carnaby and as I say nothing like it used to be but still very colorful nonetheless and associated with the punks the mods the hippies and you cannot, cannot separate music and fashion. So there's a great little selection of places to eat down here as well. And there's one really good pie store actually. Pie and mash store. Just see it in the distance there in the green on the right hand side. And there it is, Mother Mash. That's really good in there actually. All different types of pies that England is most famous for. We have the Cure, Mama Pastrama, All Day American. And I'm going to come up here because next I want to bring you into one of the coolest new stores in Soho. And I'm buzzing about this because it's not long open. And again, it's for all you amazing fans of rock and roll memorabilia. You could spend a lot of money here. I love the Dr. Martin store as well. Seeing a huge comeback in London. Everybody's wearing Dr. Martin's sandals, boots, everything. Well, look at this, you guys. We're going to head in there in just a second. 
the newest addition, the Rolling Stones store. So, but first I want to take you in here to Kingly Court. Now I have shown this on previous tours, but for those of you joining us, welcome to the channel. This is what I like to do for a living. Let's walk around London and bring you with me. So I hope you enjoyed this little foray so far. But there's so much more to come. And there we have it. Great place to eat at an outdoor courtyard here. Shuru Japanese restaurant is there, American Diner Stacks. And you have the rum kitchen is up here, which is really super cool. I love it in there. Some amazing goat curry, jerk chicken. And more importantly, some amazing rum cocktails. But next, I'm gonna take you right out on. We're heading up directly in to the Rolling Stone store. See what it's all about inside there. No. Hey, I'm excited about this. I hope you are. Let's have a look around. Oh my God, look at even the entrance, ladies and gents. This is Rolling Stones fans heaven on earth look at this oh my god the lips are everywhere Mick Jagger would be so proud do you know it's interesting several times that I've walked down here I've seen loads of celebrities over the years including Paul Weller I met Ian Brown from the Stone Roses oh my god do not sit on that chair how I would love that chair in my apartment isn't that just stunning I'm assuming it's for sale is it for sale? Yeah. How much is it, do we know? Uh, about six, six grand. About six thousand pounds will get you this incredible Rolling Stones chair. That's no problem. That's my next Christmas present next year, ladies and gents. So look at the colors, isn't it so vibrant? This is so Soho though. We love these different types of stores. Now, that's something that we could certainly use in London, the Rolling Stones umbrella. The audio of the 1966 Rolling Stone song, Painted Black, is visualized and reinterpreted as a sound wave sculpture. Look at this, guys. Oh my God, here they are in action, the greatest rock and roll band in the world. And of course, their first audition was here in Soho. I'll show you the building later on, but you'll see any information like that. You can see on my rock and roll tour of Soho. Oh, that beanie, you know me, I like a good beanie as well. Okay, let's have a look and see what they're gonna tempt me with downstairs. So 20 pounds for, what are those? Oh, it's like a little key rings. And you can get these leather gloves. How epic. Ooh, we got somebody here that wants to give us a little rendition of his own version of the Rolling Stones, only in Soho, ladies and gents. <laughs> Who killed Brown Jones? R.I.P. Charlie Watts. Mick and Keith are left, yeah. And Bill Wyman owns a restaurant drink or Bill. Peace out. Right, that couldn't have been any better. Epic. Let's have a look downstairs. Look at this, you guys. The colors are brilliant. You gotta meet a few characters like this in Soho. That's all part of it. Ooh, here we go. Oh my God, we're gonna do some damage in here. Look at the water bottles. He's still a shouting a bit in the back. I hope you can hear me okay. Look at these legendary pictures of the boys. Look at you around here. And this is the Carnaby Rolling Stones memorabilia store. So for all your Rolling Stones needs, even for the babies, I love it. Look at the little baby girls. Oh my God, I must get one. My niece or my little cousin Marie's just had a new baby. Beautiful baby, Evie. So I may be buying her one of those from her rock and roll auntie. 
excellent. Wild horses couldn't drag me away. Love, love, love wild horses. Now we're probably going to be stung for copyright, so the boss isn't going to be too happy with me, but alas, how could I not film in here? Ooh, wine glasses, gin glasses, you guys. How incredible. These girls were great. They gave me permissions to film in here. I'm so grateful to them. I think you'll be delighted with that. Look, I could live in that room. When I had an apartment in New York, one of my, uh, I don't know what we'll say, ex-friends, shall we say, painted the Rolling Stones lips, a huge mural on my kitchen wall. It was super cool. And the other one I had was Prince Muriel. He painted in my living room. There you have it, you guys. So we're gonna continue on, on the theme of music and rock and roll, of course. There is a mod clothing store coming up that I want to show you. And I'm just saying, thank you so much, girls. I appreciate it. So there you have for all your Rolling Stones needs, ladies and gents, right here on Carnaby Street. Synonymous with rock and roll, sex, drugs, fashion, and rock and roll. Now let's turn the corner here. There is a little bit of construction going on, so I might just try to get. So that's just a commercial for the Brazilian flip-flop, flip-flops, Havianas. Now on my other Soho tours, my rock and roll tour, you will have seen I've featured this. This is Soho Muriel. And a group of amateur artists got together in the 1990s and everybody on that mural has all at one time lived in Soho. So you'll see the time, so it's coming on lunchtime. And what I want to do right now is also want to take you down to see one of the oldest markets, food markets in London. This is the Berwick Food Market. But just to give you an example here, as you're passing, make sure you get a look at this along the way. Because this will give you a detailed list of every single person that's on there. And I think some of the more famous, Mozart, John Logie Baird, the likes of William Blake is there. John Snow, the founding father of the science of epidemiology. We're going to speak about him in just a moment. But just getting back, there's the Haviana store. Love their flip flops. Joe and the Juice has some amazing fresh juices. And Lord knows we all need a bit of a detox. So it's a lovely place to hang out. They also have some very cool tunes in there as well. Now here's the Malt store amazing fashionable clothing for the mod movement and if you look closely just down here I will zoom in you'll see some of the more famous people that have shopped in there over the years Paul Wills there Noel Gallagher from Oasis is there some really really cool clothing and the famous symbol they do have a mod festival in Brighton every year they all arrive in the Parker jackets I just wanted to bring you in to show you how epic this store is as well. So this is the beauty of Soho, these little independent stores. And this is basically the clothing for the mods, right? Mod clothing. And this lovely lady has given me permission to show you how colourful it is. Never mind the B-O-L-L. -L. I'm not going to say it on... We'll have to censor that out, the Sex Pistols. And we have the Clash and the Smiths. I'm a huge fan of Morrissey, actually. Saw Morrissey four or five times. There's The Who, Oasis. So that a lot of amazing celebrities have also shopped in here over the years. But I just wanted to show you how incredibly colorful it is. And here we have a month store in Soho, right around the corner from the Rolling Stone store. Doesn't get much more rock and roll than that in Soho. So this wonderful lady here is just going to give us a little bit of history of the place. Uh, she said it's an independent store. I'll just give you that, my lovely. And she's going to tell us a little bit about it. Hello, this is Bubbles. And uh, Sherry's opened this, its doors to the uh, punks, mods, and the skeins in 1979. So we have been in and around the Carnaby Street for 42 years, obviously, now. 
Um, if you follow us on Instagram, you will see how many celebrities come here and how many musicians. We do TV shows and the theater shows. Please come and have a look at yourself. Thank you so much, Stelling. That's very sweet of you. She's very sweet for letting me in. I'm really thrilled because I've always loved this little store. And Paul Weller is everywhere in here. And Liam Gallagher, of course. Great. Excellent. Thank you, honey. And we will see you again. So that was pretty cool. So the name of the store is Sherry's, you guys. And uh, that's just another one of the very eclectic, cool, little independent stores here in Soho. Now we're going to head down here because I want to talk to you a little bit about the founding father. I'll cross over actually because we're on Broadwick Street. Now this is a pretty big deal to anyone in the medicine field or the field or medical school rather because we're going to talk a little bit about the founding father of the science of epidemiology and this is Dr. John Snow. Now for any of you that have seen my West Brompton Cemetery tour and if you haven't we'll put a link in the description have a look and you'll see this is where he's buried but this is him coming up famous John Snow and there was a very f serious outbreak of cholera here in the 1850s in Soho and hundreds and hundreds of people were dying. And John Snow was one of a team of doctors who was put together, well, to try and fix the problem, essentially. So he started by using a map. And he started to map where the most serious cases were occurring. And they all seemed to center around here in Soho on Broadwick Street. At the time, it was known as Broad Street. but. Further investigation brought him to one thing that all these people who were dying of cholera had in common. And that was this very, a replica of the location of the famous Broad Street water pump. Now, upon further investigation, he discovered that the water pump had become infected by a cesspit underground. So essentially, fecal matter was being transmitted through the water system. So immediately, he got the authorities to disable the water pump and he saw an immediate decline. So essentially, it became the first epidemiology, the first, um, well, essentially it became, he realized that uh, cholera was being spread through the water system and it wasn't airborne. So clustered around the water pump located here and showed it was the cause of the epidemic. So a massive, massive, massive part of medical history. Now there was also an interesting story and I'm not confirming or denying this but somebody told me one time that the local brewery in the area there was a lot of men in there that were working in the brewery but lived in the area and using the same water pump here but nobody was contacting cholera. So upon further investigation he realized that those men were drinking the beer of the brewery and the beer tended to be cleaner than water because of the fermentation process was killing the bacteria in the water and the cholera. So for a period of time, somebody told me that they were prescribing beer as a medicine for cholera. Now I cannot confirm or deny that, but I like the idea of it. So let's go with it, right? Now, not obviously anything to do with Game of Thrones, Jon Snow, even though I have heard he has an apartment here in Soho and he often drinks in here with his wife from the show, Ygritte, uh, his real life wife and they take a drink there so if you want to meet Jon Snow from Game of Thrones you meet him in the Jon Snow pub and they will cure you of any forms or any worries you may have of contracting cholera we thank him sincerely at the moment anyway the founding father of the science of epidemiology she go oh he, I thought he was gonna let me pass that's okay sorry I think he was actually waiting to let me pass right now what I wanted to do is I want to bring you down here at lunchtime because this is the best time now Vegan and vegetarianism is huge in London. So now we have a veggie bread. Everything in there is suitable for veggies and vegans. So we're going to head down here now to one of the more popular food markets here in Soho. Now, Soho has a, seen a massive gentrification over the years. So you have a lot of music studios, advertising executives, sound recording studios, um, dubbing studios, but a very young group. Uh, particularly the advertising sector a lot of creatives and artists work in the area as well so um, you'll see a big lunchtime crowd here Monday to Friday 
and Berwick Street Market. It's really to facilitate those people. So I just want to show you the types of foods you can get down here. There's some delicious Middle Eastern foods, Jewish falafel, stunning Indian curries, Chinese curries. Um, let's have a little look, but trust me, when you do come down here, you will be hungry. So be advised. And you'll be eating after this when I show you the delicious treats here. So with these food stores, it's combined as well with fresh flowers and fruit markets. And there is absolutely, oh, it's quite quiet today, you guys. I think it's because it's the time of the year, but lovely little fresh uh, flower stall. But the smells are delicious. Now, one of my favorite places to eat along here is the Mediterranean Cafe. And I'll show you there in a moment. He does some amazing wraps. So let's have a look here. Let's see what's on offer today. Afghanistan delight. Look at the delicious hot treats that people are getting for their lunch. So it is usually a little busier than this. So I'm quite surprised actually, but not to worry. Um, this one, the Y she Egyptian falafel, beautiful fresh salads, an amazing falafel. Now what we are gonna do though is because I'm coming down here, now usually you have a lot more stalls here. So I think it's because um, some people are still working remotely from home at the moment. And that's probably why there isn't as many. But we'll head down here and I want to take you into one of my famous fancy dress um, shops in London. And this is called So High Soho. Let's head inside and I'll take you around and we'll see what trouble we can get up to in here, you guys. Heading in to Soho, So High Soho. I'm just going to bring you into the Soho jewelry store as well you're literally shopping with me today folks now let's have a look inside because i've just seen some amazing little bits in here now the smell of incense as you walk in but it's just what really hits you is the fabulous colors of these stores love heading in here these little transferable tattoos incense oh my god the smell of the incense is absolutely exquisite and here is your selection of incenses. So this is our little uh, vintage, well, our jewelry store as such. Beautiful candles, little Buddhas. So again, just so colorful. One of those amazing little stores in Soho. So much to offer. Apothecary, tonics, ointments, remedies, elixirs. Sounds all pretty good to me. I have a few of those Buddhas in my own apartment, actually. And the jewelry. This lovely lady has given us permission to come in again. Love silver jewelry, but you'll know that from me. Look at these stunning masks as well. Very eyes wide shut, right? <laughs> You're smiling at that one. You get that reference, lovely? So there it is, crystals, and that is So High Soho's jewelry store. Thank you so much, honey. Bye. So next we're gonna head up the street again, because I wanna take you down what is called now the Vinyl Mile. And Vinyl is having a huge comeback, I think we'll all agree, which is amazing. Now here's the Breakfast Club, very famous for their stunning selections of breakfast. There is one in Shoreditch as well. Uh, some more independent stores. And I always love to promote these independent stores on the tours. Um, these guys have been, some of them here for years and years and years. But vinyl, and once a year, there's a record store day down here and the place turns into one giant nightclub, this particular area. You get massive discounts on record stores. This is one of my favorite places, the Mediterranean Cafe. And he does the best wraps at lunchtime, Violet's Cafe as well. This is one of the older pubs in Solo. There's a proper, authentic English pub, the Blue Post. There are several of them around Soho. But what I want to show you later on is one of my favorite pubs with massive rock and roll history. And we're going to go in there as well. So let's keep going. Now, this street is full of art supply stores, bookstores. A lot of vinyl. It's known as the Vinyl Mile. 
So some really cool record stores along here. Looks rather boring, but don't worry. In a moment, we're going to head inside again somewhere. I'm in a lot of shops today. People are quite cool, actually. Now, this is Reckless Records. It's probably one of the first ones we vi visit. Vinyls and CDs. It's an amazing, colourful shop front there. So what I am going to do, though, is I want to take you in to the one across the road here. This is where I would usually go, and they also buy vinyl. Oh, look at this very cool hat store. It's not epic. Some very weird uh, choices here in the front. How cool are they? Look at those, you guys. Well, let's head over into the record store. Isn't that great? Euro Accessories, it's called. Okay, so let's head into Sister Ray. And I just want to show you where you can browse. And so, your vinyl. Okay, so let's have a little look inside the Sister Ray vinyl store. There's the iconic Nirvana album in bloom. Robert Plant and Alison Krauss. David Bowie, Hunky Dory. Amy, of course. Let's just have a little look around, see the selection. going to head down here into the corner to another record store now we're not going to go inside this one but it wasn't always a record store in fact it was what was called the Bricklayer's Arms pub a very famous pub and of course you know, in the 60s the 70s the 80s this area would have been teeming 
with partying rock stars because of the location of all the record studios in the area and the clubs and the nightclubs it was synonymous for years with the sex industry as well it kind of filtered out in the 1980s but you a lot of lap dancing bars a lot of prostitution nightclubs gangsters there's the blue post now this is where i'm bringing you next this is to duck lane and right there where you see the record store how epically dressed is this woman on the top floor of that very building is where the very first audition of the rolling stones took place you guys that's where they all came together but for more on that check out my rock and roll tour link will be in the description i will flash it up on the actual video itself so this very famous building right around the corner on wardour street one of my favorite pubs in soho let's go check out famous pubs of the rock stars in soho this is the ship so we're going to head inside and I'll tell you a little bit of the history of here. Now, everybody in the rock and roll community in London would have drank at one time or another in the ship because of its proximity to the famous Marquee Club. Uh, some of the stories, the alleged stories that have come over the years is the Who uh, wrote the Who Are You? Famous track inside here. Jimi Hendrix fell down the stairs in here. Keith Moon is actually barred from here for setting off some fireworks. Um, so many different bits of rock and roll history. This great little, these guys are great in here, but um, a wild, wild place. But I usually tend to bring people in here after my Soho rock and roll tour. Now we do a little rock and roll slash pub crawl tour. All these are available to you. We can organize some private tours if you like. With uh, the Sex Pistols drank in here, Madness, and Suggs from Madness still drinks in here. You never know who you'd meet when you're in Soho. And you can imagine Jimi Hendrix, quite intoxicated, falling down the stairs in here. So a lot of places. Now, if you, the hottest ticket in town was always a private gig that would take place, or an after gig, that would take place in uh, the Marquee Club. And if you wanted a ticket or an exclusive ticket to get inside there, you'd come here. Or if you wanted a last minute gig ticket, this is the place to come. And no doubt the Rolling Stones and the Beatles all drank around here because right around the corner is one of the more famous studios in London. And that'll be our next stop in a minute, the Trident Studios. So make this a place to visit on your list of Soho must-sees and must-do's here the Ship Pub right in the heart of Soho so this is so me you guys I went in there in the bright light had my little drink and come out and it's almost dusk <laughs> um, it's amazing the people you meet I met somebody there from Killarney who's a black taxi driver so we might be doing a little collab I think you guys would like that. Me and a black cab driver driving you to all the major sites in London. So let me just take you down here because I'm going to bring you to two more of my highlights of Soho. Naturally, I can't leave without heading here to the incredible Trident Studios where some of the greatest music of our generation was recorded. David Bowie, of course, the albums Hunky Dory and the Rise and Fall of Siggy Stardust. We've had several amazing artists in there. Harry Nielsen, I Can't Live, Carly Simon, You're So Vain, Get Your Yaryas Out, The Rolling Stones. I mean, some incredible music. Again, refer back to the rock and roll tour, more on that to come. Now, there's something I wanted to show you that's quite cool around here. So there was an artist in the 1980s, his name was Richard Buckley. Now, just bear with me, it's a little noisy up here, so. Now, ladies, for all your housekeeping needs. So, there is over 300,000 CCTV cameras in London. And some people have a massive objection to this because it is a kind of a 
an infringement, I guess, on our privacy. It's a fish and chips store, but I'm going to show you what I think is the best fish and chips in London. That's also featured on our food tour. Um, anyway, getting back to Richard Buckley. So this artist took exception to this and he really genuinely believed that it was an invasion on our privacy. So he did this amazing art exhibit and he put up seven plaster of Paris of his nose all around Soho, basically around by the CCTV cameras. And the idea behind it was to tell the government, mind your own business, you're being too nosy. So I'm going to show you a couple of those very cool noses. Now, here's the Soho Theatre in Barca. I mean, there's several theatres in the area that you can catch a show. We are very close to the main theatre district. Sorry, a little noisy there. The main theatre district of Shaftesbury Avenue is in the area as well. So, what's on here at the moment? Festive sea season, celebrate with us in Soho, Soho style. Soho Theatre, we can get some mulled wine. We can head inside and that's some of their productions that are on at the moment. Now, we're not going to go in there at the moment because Theoland might be quite busy and there's somewhere else I'm going to try and get you inside of. I just got to fix my night time. Oh, there we go. That's a bit better. I have to maximize it a little bit, folks. Having just a small issue with nighttime feel filming here. Now, some great eateries along the way here. Now, and a few of the massage parlors in the area too, ladies and gentlemen. It is very famous for its sex industry. We'll be heading down the amazing gay district of Soho shortly too. And that's Old Compton Street. Here we have Cuvadas. And I'll take you through there too. Delane Leah, very famous recording studio as well on 75 Dean Street. Now here's one of those very cool noses. This one you would have to find and look out for. I'm kind of spoiling the surprise that apparently if you find all seven on your own, you will have infinite wealth. So there's one of the seven noses of Soho. It's a little green one. Just bear with me a second, folks. It's one of those very fun gentlemen's clubs. But they too have one of the noses right on top. Have a look. See the purple one right up here? There's another one of them. And let's take you down here. Now, I'm going to show you where there's four. You'll have to find the other three yourself. But apparently, if you do find all seven, you will have infinite wealth, ladies and gents. Now, this one's a little difficult to find. Even I'm having trouble. Now, I've got to show you three because I don't want to spoil the surprise. There's another black one there right up on top. So this is Dean Street along here. And it's a little quiet tonight, which is good for us. So I will come through here and do a live stream when it's a bit more lively. So I'm still a bit blown away by the fact that I met a guy whose parents are from Killarney and he was a black cab driver. I even, he rang his dad actually and I rang my dad and my mom and they all knew each other. Like, oh, tell him I said hello. Such a small world. Um, all from Killarney, where I'm heading back to very shortly, folks. Super excited, so probably bring you there again. I'm going to have some special treats for you lined up there. And we're going to head down towards where I actually believe is the best cup of coffee in London, you guys. And that is a stunning bar Italia that's been trading here for over 50 years, can you believe? fabulous Italian family have run this establishment for years. I'm looking forward to seeing them. I haven't seen them in a while. Any of you fans of garlic, you've got garlic shots in here in Olson's. I believe you can do garlic shots and garlic beer. And a lot of my customers over the years have told me that you have an amazing garlic festival in California as well, don't you guys? Every year. 
I don't dislike garlic, but I don't imagine I would be taking shots of garlic in the near future. It's the amazing Ronnie Scott's. Now this is a pretty cool place as well. It's a private karaoke and cocktail bar where you can actually rent a private booth, karaoke booth, and hang out with six or eight of your friends and sing your lungs out, ladies and gents. Now, Baratelia looks quite busy today. But this is um, Hopper's, fabulous Sri Lankan food, you guys. It's usually like a first come, first serve basis, but it's quite quiet tonight. But amazing food in there. I've eaten in there, it's really good. No boss meat and Ronnie Scott's, or Jimi Hendrix, was last played on stage. It's also where The Who performed the rock opera Tommy for the very first time. Amy Winehouse has been in there, Prince has played in there, Miles Davis, Ella Fitzgerald. An amazing bar upstairs as well. So you can dance the night away in the incredible Ronnie Scott's. Now, all their gigs are usually online for January and December, and they're usually very, very busy. But this place is special. And here's my buddy, I haven't seen him in a while. Hoping he'll spot me now. Oh, sorry. It's uh, his little Italy restaurant here. They're having espressos and red wine. I'm so jealous. And it is an institution here in Soho, open all through the night. Even the police are all hanging out outside here. But this is the best cup of coffee in tiramisu in Soho. So if you are wanting a proper cup of coffee, this is where you come. Now, let me see if I can get inside. I'm sure I'll be able to. So here's my buddy who's going to bring me through, you guys. I said, you're going to bring me through your fabulous establishment, my lovelies. Yeah, excellent. We're on the way. Hi, guys. How are you? You want to say hello to YouTube, ladies and gents? Say hi, guys. They're all there on YouTube. They're having a fabulous evening. Champagne and wine for everyone. Champagne? YouTube. Um, I, I'll explain to you in a minute. I have a, a big following on YouTube, so I'm doing a video. Champagne! Champagne! For everyone! Excellent! See? Only in Soho, my darling. Look how dapper. Look how dapper these gorgeous people are. I think I'll have you having one of those espresso martinis shortly, my lovelies. Thank you. Merry Christmas. We're coming in to see the atmosphere. Ah, look at this, you guys. How amazing. The place is buzzing. It's going to show me around. Hi, guys. Now, how could you not come here to see this amazing restaurant? Oh, my days. Now, can I go upstairs just to get a look? There's a, there's nothing upstairs yet. They'll be full up tonight. They'll be full up here tonight. Look at this gorgeous place. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. How are you? <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. What an amazing crew. This place is awesome, ladies and gents. How fabulous. Everyone's enjoying their Christmas parties and their glasses of wine. Look at the bar, all fully stocked and ready to go. Sorry, lovely. So I'm just going to go into the cafe section and I'm going to show you the best cup of coffee in Soho. And this is the owner here, my absolute gent of a lovely friend. He's uh, very famous for their pizzas and their coffee and their tiramisu. They get a lot of celebrities here over the years. We still have Rocky Marciano inside, we do. Uh, well, he's been there since 1969. He's not going anywhere. He's not going anywhere in the near future. No. Oh, you guys, look at this. It's such a beautiful mild day. Look, now, how could you not come to Bar Italia, you guys? I think you only close for about three hours a night, we isn't do, it? We do. We They're close. open right through the night. Yep. I mean, a little piece of Italy right in the middle of Soho. Always, always promote this place. Love it. The tiramisu. It's been here 73 years, the cafe. I'm going to put you on camera, darling. Would you say a little bit about it? It's your, your business, my lovely. So, Bar Italia has been in the family uh, since uh, 1949. 1949, wow. Yep, it's four generations of the Pelletri family. Yes. And nothing has really changed inside the cafe very much. If you notice the red and white formica, 
That's still the same as it was in 49. The floor is laid by my Uncle Torino in 49. Your Uncle Torino? Yeah. Oh. How stunningly beautiful. This, this building is where John Logie Bird first demonstrated TV. That's right. And he lived in the flat above, the top floor flat, and demonstrated it just above this room here. And, and one of the things that you see is the gadget coffee machine and the poster. Oh, how amazing. The gadget yeah, the coffee, coffee machine, machine has been with us for 60 years. 60 years yeah, the coffee machine yeah, has yeah, been yeah. here, guys. Look at this. Are these the cannellonis? Cannoli. Cannoli, rather. Cannoli. Oh, cannoli, all the proper pastries. You and guys. Rocky Marciano poster was given by his wife, Barbara. When he unfortunately died in 69, he was a friend of my father. Oh. And, and, and those are his original gloves. Look at his original gloves, yeah. ladies and gents. Yeah. Rocky Marciano's yeah. original yeah. gloves. Yeah. This is the coolest place in Soho. Well, thank you so much. Love thank you, you guys. This you is three amazing. In Three in the morning, I'll be back for my wine. Look at this. Oh, ladies and gents, this is the true original Bar Italia, ladies and gents, an institution in London. Even the police are hanging out here. And just to show you the highlight, let me just show you. As he was mentioning there, it's a little difficult to hear, but I'll just maximize that. I've just put on spotlights. John Logie Bear demonstrated and he lived upstairs, the first television inside in that very room. Over on this side, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart lived in that building here. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my highlight of Soho. Sorry about the visuals there. Those bright lights are not helping me. So I hope you enjoyed that, ladies and gentlemen. Sinead here in Soho. I'm going to join these fabulous people for a glass of wine. Thanks a million for all your tips and PayPal's, you guys. Merry Christmas. I will be speaking to you all before Christmas. But for right now, this is Sinead signing out from London.